What's up YouTube, I'm just another guy and welcome back to my rise to fame. So here we are with Chelsea, 13th of May 2023 and we could be about to win the Premier League. So one of the goals with this save was to one day manage Chelsea and one day win the Premier League with Chelsea and win the Champions League with Chelsea and stuff like that. Uh, I never thought it would happen when my character was still 28. I always imagined my guy would be 40, 50 and he'd finally get a chance to manage in England, finally get to manage Chelsea and, you know, it would move on from there. I never thought that, you know, my fourth ever club that I'd be in charge of would be Chelsea and in my first ever full season, I'd have the chance to win the Capital One Cup, which I've done, the Premier League, which I've done and we've got an FA Cup final coming up this year. So no Champions League final, but... I could be about to end my first ever full season with Chelsea the same way I ended my first ever full year of FC Lati, which is a domestic treble. So, you know, it's been, a, it's been a cracking season. It's been really great. We've got a lot of things to go through. So the start of the competition is the best place. So obviously, if we can win the league today it, with a game spare, um, you know, obviously we're top of the table then. So currently we've won 27 games, drawn four and lost five. Got a goal difference of 16, got 85 points. Um... It's been a great year for us. We've been up here. We've been top of the table for majority of the season. Uh, Manchester United definitely choked near the end. Uh, they actually progressed further than the quarterfinals in the Champions League. As you can see, we got knocked out by Real Madrid. But yeah, Man U, they, they're in the final. We're going to be playing them in the FA Cup final. They've got, they've had Champions League semi-finals. And overall, I think their squad just sort of cracked under the amount of games they've had to play in this short space of time at the end of the season. They've had FA Cup semi-finals. They've had the Champions League quarterfinals semi-final. Um, so yeah, they've got like a lot of fixtures, like I say, they just sort of crumbled. And as a result, we were able to capitalise, we were able to close the gap and then grow out a gap um, to them because we, at one point we were four or five points behind them. So the fact that we now five point, you know, six points ahead of them with the chance to win the game um, in the early kickoff on the second last game of the season uh, means that, you know, it's a great accomplishment and a great credit to my team as well for the good form and the amount of pressure we were able to apply to them. But yeah, we've got the FA Cup final coming up against uh, Man U as well later on in this video. We won the Capital One Cup already. Knocked out to Real Madrid in the Champions League in the first leg. Probably the most infuriating first leg I've ever had in the Champions League. Probably more infuriating than one I've had at Gibraltar United. It was that infuriating. It was that annoying. And you'll see in a second. But I want to go into the Premier League in a little bit more detail. So, yeah, we've been, we've been incredible this league. And I would say that we are... We, we are deserved winners. We, you know, I, throughout the whole season, it was always us and another team battling for the title. From my perspective, it was always from the start of the season or near the start of the season, it was me and Fulham battling. And then Fulham fell away and Man U came up. And then it was us and Man U battling for the title pretty much to the end. So, you know, I, there's, again, I can't really see. Um, why we wouldn't deserve it. We've scored 96 goals this season. I don't quite know what the record is for the most goals in a single league season. Um, it's 128 from Aston Villa. So we're nowhere near breaking that. But still, to if we could break the 100 goals mark before the end of the year, we've got a game against QPR, which is today. And then we've got one more game after this, which is a game against Blackpool, who are already relegated. But if we win the game today, I'll probably play a weakened team against Blackpool so I can rest my players up for the FA Cup final. Um, but yeah, it's been a great year this year. But... Mo but the reason for it is the individual performances of uh, quite a few players, but most notably Eden Hazard. So this season, Eden Hazard has scored 38 league goals this season. He's broken the record for the most ever league goals in a single league season. As you can see, top goal scorer Eden Hazard with 38. He's also broken the record for the most ever man to match awards, which is a record he himself previously held with 12. So... You know, Eden Hazard has been amazing this year. 8.12 average match rating. And he has played in, what is it? I think it's 34 games has he played in? 35 games this season. So he's only missed one Premier League game. That is that is a record second to none, quite literally. It's it's, an, it's a great record. John claude Capper as well has got 20 goals. Marcus Parker and Oscar, as you can see in the top four rated players. Uh, Marcus Parker is incredible as well. Just an absolute beast. You know, the fact that he's come through the Chelsea youth system as well is is quite extraordinary. Uh, Oscar as well has got 18 assists. If he gets one more, he breaks the record for the most ever assists by a single player in a Premier League season. A record currently held by Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. So Oscar only needs one more assist, which is good. Hopefully we can get him that in the next game. With Hazard, I'd love for him to score two more goals and get 40 league goals this year before the end of the season. So, you know, it, it we've just been... Absolutely incredible this year, and um, 
you know, the way to way to show you in all competitions is just to look at this screen. You know, Cabo, if we look at Cabo's stats, 47 games started, 33 goals, 15 assists, 5 player of the match awards. Marcus Parker, 55 games started, the most, the, more than any other outfield player. 20 goals, 24 assists, 8, man, eight player of the match awards. Oscar, 53 starts, 13 goals, 25 assists, 5 player of the match awards. Eden Hazard, in all competitions, has got 53 starts, 51 goals, 18 assists, 17 player of the match awards. That is just an extraordinary accomplishment. And then, you know, Tristan Ferreira, probably the best left back in the world right now. 50 appearances this season, an incredible average rating. Adam Maurice has been a brilliant. He's currently got a bit of a problem. He says he wants to win a title and stuff. But, you know, hopefully today, once we get that confirmed, he'll be happy to stay with us. Uh, Saltos has had a good first year. John Stones is just John Stones. Courtois is Courtois. You know, just great players. And to consider the fact that at the start of the year, I had Sobotic, Oscar, and I think someone else come forward and say they weren't happy with the lack of squad depth. The fact that, you know, my second team is probably not good enough to even get Europe in this league. The fact that all of that put together still means that we've won the, won the league. And if you look at my backup players, a lot of them have played. I mean, Robert Bellamy, a young 17-year-old, you know, is someone I, I, I envisioned playing at the start of the season. I envisioned playing at the start of the season, but not as much as he did. For him to not look at a place when I did play him is a credit to him. And, you know, Quintero's come in and done well at times. Sydney has done very well this year and actually was my starting centre mid for a long time before Mbele came back. Uh, Mbulo, Wanyama are great experienced players that will probably on, be on their way out in the summer. Wanyama is definitely leaving in the summer due to the fact his contract expires. So is Sobotic. Mbulo might be on his way out. Depends if I can find a replacement. He's worth a lot. He's 30. I'd rather get him out now before his value starts declining. Um, but yeah, we've got a few people leaving this summer, Cavani, Wanyama and Sobotic, but, you know, Sobotic and Cavani would have been leaving because I'm just not happy with them. Sobotic as well is kicking up a fuss. With Wanyama, he just, he wants too much a week in terms of wages. Um, he wants like a three-year deal. I said, look, we'll go with two, but I'm not going to increase your wage. He says, no, I want 150 grand a week. I was like, no, no, mate, you're not going to have that. So Nathan Pierce is going to be starting next year for us, but we've got a great squad here. We've got a mixture of experience in the form of Oscar Hazard, um, Stones and Courtois, you know, as well as some youth players, you know, or younger players, Cabba, Parker, Pierce, Ferreira, Mbele, uh, Saltos, and then, you know, Maurice is in his prime. I've got some great youth players coming through my team as well. I've gone my potential. Look at the youth. Uh, Kearns looks like an absolute beast. He's currently being tutored by Oscar as well. Um, Mitch Lee is currently being tutored by Eden Hazard. He looks like he could be a good player in the future for us. Emery's good. He's currently being tutored by, I think it's John Stones, is it? Um, yeah, no, it's not. It's John Sutar. And, but we've got some great young players here that I want to bring through the squad next year. So, um, yeah, I, I think this squad, you know, is going to be really good, really interesting, and hopefully has the quality to finish off this treble this year, but not only that, push on further in Europe next year. So let's go through the fixtures very quickly. So we beat Hull 4-1 in the Capital One Cup, which you saw. After that, we beat Liverpool 3-1 in the Premier League, a very comfortable victory. Beat Newcastle United 4-3 in the FA Cup sixth round. It was quite a tense game. We were from 4-2 up. Come the 52nd minute, Eden Hazard had got two goals in this game. Cabra and Parker. Uh, Jeremy Borger, our ex-player, continues to score against us. I think it's the second game in a row now. Uh, but it, they scored in the 80th minute to make it 4-3, which could have led to a, a tense last 10 minutes. But we killed off the game once they got the third. We started dominating possession and just completely ruining their chances. So very nice victory, putting us through to the FA Cup semi-final. We beat Sampdoria 4-0 in what I would probably say is... The best, maybe one of the best victories, if not the best victory that we've got in the Champions League this season. I'd say it's probably the best victory we've got because to limit Sampdoria to not getting us a goal, not getting a goal against us is a really good accomplishment. Um, and also the, f the fact that the scoreline was 4-0 and the aggregate scoreline was 8-2 is just a great achievement for the club, you know, against a still a very good team. Sampdoria have got some absolutely brilliant players and I know because quite a few of them are Brazilian. Uh, Reading. Followed up next and we lost to them. This was a infuriating defeat and actually put us in real doubt of whether we were going to win the title. Because at that point, I think we fell like five points behind Man U. I think we might have had a game in hand. I, f I don't know. It was something like that. But it put us in a, it put us in a tricky situation losing to Reading. And the reason we lost was because Imbula got sent off in the 16th minute. We were still in the game, even though we were down to 10 men. But I felt the man advantage killed us off. They started scoring uh, at the end of the, near the end of the first half and at the start of the second. And... 
Once we fell 3-0 down, I knew it was game over. Bounce back instantly, beat West Brom 3-2. Nice victory. Uh, Hazard's double, winning us the game. He's penalty in the 39th, actually being the winner. Then against Fulham, we won 4-1. Eden had Eden has had hat trick and Adam Maurice scoring the goals there, beating our rivals before again Eden Hazard scored a hat trick. This time in the second half, this time against Man City, and this was probably my favourite victory of the Premier League season. I don't know, I, I think it probably was. It was just the scoreline was so big against someone that it shouldn't really be four 0 against. It it was just a great performance from the team. Great attacking, great defensive everywhere, all around the field. Just a, a brilliant performance. So when I lost us out uh, to Tottenham two one next. It really did infuriate me. And, you know, we were on a decent run of form and I really wanted to be on a perfect run of form heading into the Real Madrid game. So to lose this one was frustrating. But Suso scored a very great, a very good free kick in the 80th minute. And, you know, with free kicks, uh, they're sort of, you know, annoying to concede. But when you concede a good free kick, there's nothing you can really do about it. So you just have to hold your hands up and say, yeah, Suso did well to beat us. And the thing is, Suso was on fire in this game and the free kick matched the performance he was putting in for his team. So lost to Tottenham. Then came probably the worst defeat of the season. We lost we lost the Manu 4 early on in the year in the league. But that was away from home. And that was early on in the season when we could recover from it. And um, it wasn't as bad of an individual. You know, we had about a few bad performances in there. But we also had a few decent performances in the Man U game. For example, Wanyama got a 7.9. Uh, Quintero played decently well. And Buller played all right. Courtois was decent. But, you know, didn't have much support ahead of him. Against Real Madrid, every single performer out there was not up to a high enough standard. And the thing is, when you concede four goals in the space of 20 minutes, you're not worthy of going forward in the Champions League. Now, conceding four away goals, I think I mentioned this against Sampdoria, was it, last time? If you concede four away goals, it's pretty much game over. And we did. And I knew that if we wanted any chance of going through to the semi-final of the Champions League, we were going to have to score two goals at least here today. And we didn't. But the thing is, it was the way we fell apart. We were just shocking. And the last goal, the goal that completed off Tony Sam Sandabria's hat-trick and our, you know, Madrid's fourth was the worst goal I've probably seen us concede all season long. You know, what can I do? <laughs> what can I do at that point? I mean, that's the captain. That is an experienced goalkeeper of Courtois. Just passing the ball between both centre-backs with their backs to him. And the striker just coming through and chipping him. It, it was so infuriating. So, so infuriating. The thing is, it wasn't even like the defence was just bad. Going forward, we were dreadful. Absolutely dreadful. So, 4-0 defeat. We did deserve it. Um, although going into the game, we should never have, uh, you know, going into the match, we never looked like we were going to lose 4 0. In fact, we were favourites for that tie. So that just shows how bad we played. Then in the FA Cup semi final next, we won, we drew 0 0 over the extra time and um, 90 minute period that we had. Uh, we were all, always in control of the game and always looked like we were going to be going through. And in the 90 minutes, I decided I'd just keep playing the football we're playing and hopefully we'll get a goal. It never came. So as we went into extra time, I decided, okay, I'm going to go forward now and look to um, attack them. I look to try and go out there and win the game in this extra time in these next 30 minutes that we're going to be provided with. But Marcos Parker got himself injured in the 93rd minute, so only three minutes into extra time, which meant we were down to 10 men in extra time, which killed off the tie pretty much altogether. So I knew penalties was coming. And it did come, and thanks for us, the um, Arsenal's last penalty, Arsenal's fifth penalty, was saved by Courtois, so making up for his mistake kind of in the last game, and Quintero was able to score the winning penalty. So, uh, again, beating our rivals and getting ourselves through to the FA Cup final, which I said could give us a domestic treble. And then and then we drew 1-1 to Madrid, but I don't really, it's not too important. I guess some dignity restored with a decent result away from home, but... I mean, that's just unforgivable, really. And then in the previous three games, we played some very easy teams. Sunderland, a team that have only won once all season long, beat them 3-0. Beat, uh, beat Southampton 2-1, but a team that always seemed to struggle against us. And we beat Hull 2-0, so they were unable to get a little bit of um, revenge for the Capital One Cup final defeat, as Eden Hazard got a double. So, you know, QPR today, fourth place. They actually drew to Manchester United in their last game, and it is the reason why we can win the title today, because they drew against... Um, Man U 2-2 here. Thierry Ambrose, our ex-player who I sold in the summer, actually scored two goals to help QPR come back from 2-0 down to draw 2-2. But yeah, just something I want to show you. Sunderland have been absolutely shocking this year, and so have Blackpool, in all fairness. Them two have been relegated for a little while now, 
And they thoroughly deserve to go down. Absolutely shocking, both of them. And the thing is, they're both just newly promoted. I don't know how Danny Wilson still has his job, because I would sack him with only 12 points this season. And with Blackpool as well, they were newly promoted, and Nigel Clough just couldn't do anything. Uh, the last relegation spot is still up for the um, up for debate. You know, no team is exactly relegated yet from them. It could easily be Leicester, Crystal Palace, or Hull. So that would be interesting. We don't have any of them teams coming up, so, you know, it's no worry. Um... But let's hopefully win the uh, win the Premier League today. So I don't think there's anything else I need to go through. I spoke about everyone just doing incredibly well. Um, I spoke about how the how we were doing in the league, match stats and all that stuff. Let's go forward into this game. So team for the day has been a team pretty much throughout the season, apart from the two centre mids. It's Courtois in goal, Stones right back, Saltos Maurice as our centre backs, Ferreira as our left back, Pierce and Mbele are our centre mid guys, Oscar Hazard and Parker are our attacking midfielders, and Cabra is up front. When I say it's not the normal team, that's because normally I would have Wanyama in the team. But with the league title pretty much wrapped up, I decided I'll give Nathan Pierce a bit more experience before he's thrown in the deep end next year because he's going to be our starting defensive bid next season. And with Mbele, he's returned from injury recently, and I decided, yeah, we'll give him a go. Up until then, it was Sydney as our starting centre mid. But let's go. I'm confident we can get a result today despite QPR. Um... Holding new, uh, Manu to a draw re, um, previously, and despite them being in fourth place and playing really well above, expect, above expectation, I still would say we're the team's going to win. At home, we've got an incredible form. You know, we're really tough to beat. So, um, yeah, let's go. Uh, one thing as well I kind of want to mention, I'll get into the game though before I do, is that... Um, Got some new Fulham. You got some new Premier League teams and some new London teams battling for the top four. QPR and Fulham have been incredible since I've been here, and um, like I say, it's nice to see some other London teams considered actual top dogs now in the Premier League. It's not just Arsenal, Tottenham, and Chelsea as it currently is. It's actually QPR and Fulham. So a lot of London teams, you know, growing um, and make and actually dominating the Premier League. You know, there's already a lot of London teams in the Premier League, but now they're at the top of the table, which is. A credit to them because they're not exactly major teams so for them to be up there is quite an accomplishment and hopefully they'll be in the Champions League next year you know I would like Fulham to be in the Champions League more than QPR so hopefully we can beat QPR today and Fulham can get a win later on in the day and they can go above them but yeah I'd like them to get uh, top of the table and that would be cool uh, but there's no I was just looking Palace is another London team of course but they look like they're about to get relegated as Eric Dyer concedes an own goal and gives us the lead and could be about to win us the lead title. Um, I think I'm going to mention this um, a second ago, but I do want Eden Hazard to get his 40th goal this season and I'd love Oscar to break the record for most assists as well. So hopefully they can link up today, score a goal, Oscar assist, Hazard goal and Hazard can get another one maybe later on and get himself um, his 40. And one thing as well, Hazard does take our penalties and he's scored... Uh, I'm not sure how many he scored, but I believe he scored every single penalty this season. And obviously that's helped um, get his 50 goals in all competitions and his 38 in this league season. But I don't think that dampens his uh, um, record any anymore. You know, Andrew Cole, who held the previous record, I don't, you know, I don't, um, I don't know if he took penalties or not. I don't remember Andrew Cole taking penalties as QPR get themselves back in the game with Cuss scoring. Uh, but yeah, I don't remember if he took penalties or not. But even if he did, you uh, know, even if... And even though Hazard takes penalties, it's still an incredible achievement. To take penalties is never an easy thing. You know, pressure is always on. And that's why not every striker takes penalties, for example. Because not every striker has the ability to take penalties well. Um, another thing I forgot to mention as I was talking, I remembered it. Eden Hazard is now the top goal scorer uh, or has scored the most league goals for Chelsea than any other player. So he broke um, Frank Lampard's record, although when he broke the record in game, it actually said he broke Bobby Tamlin's record, which I don't understand. It was Frank Lampard, and it is Frank Lampard. Um, but yeah, he broke the record. He's now scored the most league goals, um, or the player with the most league goals for Chelsea. So, you know, it's a credit to how good he is. And bear in mind, you know, this season and all of it, you know, the season that he's putting in, the best season of his career based on stats, he's 32 years of age in this game. So for him to be playing, you know, the performance he is and putting in the performance he is, is... A credit to how good he's been. I just realised, why is Oscar out on the right? Did I accidentally drag them around when I was doing the lineup? He should be there. But yeah, it's a credit to how good Hazard's been. It's just absolutely incredible, you know? 32 and still doing that. And I'm sure if he can continue this form this season into next season, he'll definitely win the Ballon d'Or and definitely win World Player of the Year. So it's Oscar with a free kick, trying to find Pierce. And Parker is there. I might be offside. 
It is an offside, so Marcus Parker gives us the lead yet again. Another player that's just been great this year, and he's 22, so he could easily get another decade out of Parker if he wanted to. But Maurice assisting Parker, and um, it was a great finish. Keeper was nowhere near it. A looping corner, a looping shot in the other corner, a lot of power on it as well. So 2-1 ahead. Let's hope that we can keep the lead this time. Looked like that could have been a penalty there. I'm not too sure. It looked like the player went down quite harsh. And there's a lot of blue shirts around him. But nothing was given. So I'm, I'm, that's good. <laughs> that's good. But oh no. They do get the fucking goal back. Come on Chelsea. What's going on? Why are we letting QPR play decently against us? What is this? Um, everyone's fired up. Everyone's motivated. But... Yeah, we're going to take Umbelli off and bring Sydney on. Someone that has put in some good performances recently in that position. So, uh, let's call on him today. Giving him 30 minutes to try and make a difference. But everyone's really fired up. But just, come on, get the get the goal we need. Let's win it today. And in the last end of the season, I can rest the players I want to rest. I probably will start Hazard because I want him to get the 40 goal record. <laughs> And make sure that he, the most goals in a single Premier League season is pretty much impossible to beat. So I did go attacking now. I do want to win this game, like I say, today. And I think this is a very winnable tie. We're all over QPR and we should be ahead. Eden Hazard beating the man. Eden Hazard with the shot. But that is not like him this season. <laughs> Wasting the opportunity when he's one-on-one. -on -one. Parker now on that left-hand side. A man on him, but he lays it off to Oscar. Oscar, ball over the top, trying to find Cabra and can't. Sydney plays the ball to Eden Hazard, who plays it through to Cabra, who somehow can't get it in on target. Couldn't get it on the right side of the post. Cabra's been brought down, though, and now Eden Hazard will have the chance to step up and score his 39th league goal of the season. Come on, Eden. You can do it. You can do it. Here is Eden Hazard. Scores straight down the middle. 38th, 39th goal of the season. We're going to go back into the controlled mentality. And um, again, you know, I mentioned these penalties. I don't think that makes his record any less important or any less um, admirable than the fact that he's done that. Ferreira to Parker. Unable to make it 4-2. Good opportunity for Parker. I just realized we've, that, that penalty was our first clear-cut opportunity. As Maurice hits the post yet again the woodwork stopping us from scoring Parker on the left hand side Dyer doing uh, some good defending there trying to make up for his own goal from earlier on so uh, I don't think there's another change I particularly need to make I mean we've not exactly got an important game coming up um, so yeah everyone's fine fitness should see them out to the rest of the game so let's just get you know let them lads play these last few minutes and Oscar Maurice's header is unable to get it on target. But there we go. We have won the game 3-2. And we have won the Premier League title with Chelsea. That will obviously do wonders for my Hall of Fame record that I'm going for. But most importantly, it's the first time Chelsea have won the title in... God, how many years is it now? Uh, in four seasons. It's been four years since Chelsea last won the Premier League. So, you know, it's about time we start, we won it again. So... Yeah, won a double, uh, this and the Capital One Cup. It means I've also won three trophies since I've been at Chelsea. And it's only my second year. Um, I'm going to do this team talk off camera. Wanyama picks up a bonus for winning the Premier League, whatever. Um, Maurice is happy to stay since I said I'd win a trophy. And we did win it. And uh, there you go. The board are delighted with that. At the start of the year, they thought just getting the Champions League would be the, achieve would be the aim. And I agreed with them. I said, look, we'll just get in the Champions League. Anything more would be a plus. In January, I said I'd challenge for the title, and now we've won it. So they've got to be pleased with that. And um, the QPR manager apologizes for the defeat, uh, but I don't care. So let's go on the Hall of Fame and have a little look. So are we um, are we on there yet? Because has it, has it officially been added to our list? It has. There we go. One Premier League title, 2023. 642 points. Uh, as a continent, we have got 607. Still a little while for getting Rafa Benitez. And in England, we are 212. Wow, Jose Mourinho is only 10th on that list. And as a nationality, oh, we're so close. If we can win the FA Cup, we'll break onto the English Hall of Fame. But yeah, I'll meet you guys back in a second for the FA Cup final. Won't gonna, I'm not going to live come the last league game in a season. But I will tell you what goes on in that game uh, when, we, when I meet you back. So, see you in a second. Alright guys, so we're back for 
the Manchester United FA Cup final. Let's go on and finish this treble. So, Capacity Stadium at Wembley. Let's run through the starting lineup and then I'll go back and have a look at the um, last game of the season because I didn't, didn't show you that. And actually, we've got a few awards to go through and stuff. So, yeah, Cotuara's in goal today. We've got Stones at right back, Saltos Maurice at centre backs, Ferreira at left back. We've got Wanyama playing our midfielder for us. It actually, should be ball winning. Uh, we've got Mbelli playing centre mid, Oscar Hazard and. Again, it shouldn't be like that. It should be Hazard, Oscar, and Parker as our attacking three. And up front, we have got Kaba. And in the bench is Will Gill, Nevin Sobotic, Sutar, Pierce, Sidney, Quintero, and Colin Gell. And in the last game of the season, we won 2-0. Eden Hazard got his 40th league goal of the season. And um, Oscar got himself his assist that he needed. If I go on to player stats... And um, there you go. Oscar got the assist he needed. So Oscar broke the record for the most assists in a single league season with 19. F um, Hazard broke the record for most league goals in a single league season. Now, Alberto uh, Tenconi, who played for Liverpool, he would have broken a record if it was not for Eden Hazard scoring five more goals. Uh, in terms of awards, I was surprised by a few of them. In uh, Golden Glove, I wasn't surprised we didn't get in the top three. We've not been in the top three for a while now. Um... Goal of the season, we didn't pick that up. Golden Boot went to, of course, Eden Hazard. Uh, manager of the year, I picked that up. So that's my fourth Manager of the Year award in my career and the first one here in the Premier League. And bear in mind, I, I, I had... Um, wait, where's Manager of the Month? I only won two Manager of the Month awards. So, you know, it wasn't like I completely clean-sweeped it. Uh, Player of the Month, you know, we picked it up on a few occasions. But uh, FWA, the Football Writers Academy, or, or whatever it is, what they have, whatever the FWA stands for, it's Football Writers Association, I think it's that, uh, it meant that Eden Hazard won Footballer of the Year for the third consecutive year. And um, for PFA Player of the Year, for some reason, Eden Hazard didn't pick it up. I, For the life of me, I can't figure out why not. I mean, whatever. I mean, that's a load of BS. Uh, Players Football Association is a load of bollocks anyway. <laughs> We've seen that in real life in this season. Um, Team of the year. Again, Eden Hazard didn't even get in the team of the year. I mean, he, he's on the bench. What? Okay, yeah. Alex Oxlade Chamberlain's had a better year than him. Oh, wait, maybe Seuss is a. No, none of them have had a fucking better year than him because he's been the best player out there. Look at his average rating. Let's not put him in team of the year. Anyway, Cabo, Ferreira, Maurice, and Stones did get in team of the year, which are all logical, and I completely agree with every single one of them. Courtois, you could argue, could maybe go in the team, but De Gea got golden gloves, so I'm going to. I accept that. I concede that. Parker should have been in the team instead of Seuss or Oxlade Chamberlain. Eason Hazard and Dot Parker should have both been in the team. Apart from them, we should have had two additional players in team of the season. Fuck PFA. And um, there's one more PFA award we've still got to go through. It's PFA Young Player of the Year award. Now this time, they actually stood up and we were, we recognised some talent from our team. And they gave it to Marcos Parker, who is actually a very good player and has had an incredible year this year. So, those are the awards. A few that annoy, annoyed me. But let's go into this FA Cup final. And fingers crossed we can get this treble completed. If not, you know, a double will do. I mean, I'll always take a Premier League title and a Capital One Cup any day. <laughs> so they reckon a nervy game in Buller and their striker right injured. They should, uh, they reckon it'll go the way to penalties. I'm not too sure. I don't think we've ever drawn against Manu with me in charge. It's all or nothing. So let's hope um, we can get that today. There's Jody Morris doing that. And let's go. Come on, Chelsea. Let's do this for the fans. Let's do it for the badge. Let's do it for blue. Come on. Let's make England properly blue by winning every single competition we were entered in this season from England. Uh, excluding the Community Shield, of course, because we weren't entered into that. Uh, but we will be next year winning the Premier League. <laughs> And Manu, by the way, have a, um, I'm not sure if I mentioned this earlier or not, uh, but they do have a, uh, they have a Champions League game after this. So, you know, they've, they've obviously got a few, Diff well, they might have a different thing on their mind. You know, they don't want to don't want to get injured for the Champions League final. Uh, so we may have an advantage there. But it's been a shocking first half. Manu had one attempt or one highlight, and that was it. Um, we've yet to have a shot on target in 45 minutes. That's pretty poor from us. Um, but it's just like the journalist said. It, it's been a, a quite a tense, quite a close affair. No one really wants to make that mistake. So everyone's being very cautious, very. Um, like I said, just cautious. Someone, you know, no one wants to make that step out of line and be the reason that his team loses the final. Hazard's not having a good game. Neither is Marcos Parker. But here's Oscar with a free kick. Hitting the crossbar. Eden Hazard can't get the rebound. So we get a corner. Decent free kick from Oscar. Parker's going to whip it in. 
I'm able to find the blue shirt, but Eden Hazard's going to collect it and hopefully find it, uh, bring it back in the box. Try going by himself and it didn't really work out. So, wow. Mbele's looking pretty tired or he, or he picked up a knock. Either way, though, we're going to take him off and bring Sydney on. And I, I think if Hazard doesn't... Actually, I don't think I'll take Hazard off. He's a penalty taker. I don't feel confident doing that. Um, what I may do is I may put him out on the left and I may put Mar take Marcos Parker off. In fact, we've got a highlight. It's Stones with a throw-in very deep in, their, in the opposition's half. Plays it to Oscar. Eden Hazard with the ball. Back out wide to Stone. Someone surely should have whipped that in from the wing. Either way, Oscar's got a little bit of space and Oscar gives us the lead in the FA Cup final. He's 14th goal of the season. Sydney with the assist and it's giving us a 1-0 lead. So, um, I'm going to keep everything the same. I don't think there's any real reason to change it. But it was a nice pass through Sid to Sydney. Oscar, beautiful first touch because it got him away from his body and away from the defender and also opened it up. Opened it up so he had a bit of space where he could strike the ball cleanly and get it in the back of the net. So we're going to make another change. Oh, we're going to make a change. We're going to take um, Jean-Claude Caber off. We're going to bring Quintero on. We're going to bring Gel on, sorry. And we're also going to bring Quintero on. But we're going to take off Marcos Parker. And we're going to see what them two changes do. More of a time-wasting tactic than anything. And plus a fresh pair of legs in the attacking third. Because, man, you might throw a few people forward. Therefore, a counter-attack might be a way that we score. Here is Colin Gel, who scored in the final game of the season. has been tackled, actually. And now they Manchester United get to come back at us. A lot of people out of position. We've got to get back. Juan Mata, he's crossed his blocks. And Eden Hazard could create a counter-attack for us. Here's Gel with the ball. Being held up, but we're still going to try and flood forward. Eden Hazard to Joe yet again, who's been tackled again. Quintero, Joe gets in the way, but Joe gives it to Oscar, who makes it 2-0. And that should surely wrap up this FA Cup final and wrap up a fantastic season for Chelsea. A treble in uh, tre a domestic treble, a brilliant year for me. Four trophies this year with the potential of maybe getting a fifth. The fourth one being the Super Classico with Brazil and the potential fifth being the Copa America in the summer. So, Oscar has had a brilliant game today. Colin Gell, he did his best to try and stop us scoring there, but in the end, allowed the assist, for, got the um, played the ball to Oscar for him to get the second and just kill the game off. And maybe Gell will get a goal himself. He's in a decent position. He's been tackled. He's been brought down. Luke Shaw with the challenge. But there we go. We have won at Wembley for the second time this year. And we have beaten Manchester United for the first time this year in the second final that we've played them in. So, a brilliant performance from Oscar. We have to bow down to him because that was great. Without him, we probably wouldn't have scored. And um, it says we've celebrated a double. That should be treble. <laughs> um, I don't know why that said double because it said, there you go. It said he lifted it in May. It should be a treble. I don't see why that's not a treble. Um, although, I guess people when people say treble in England, obviously it means FA Cup. Premier League, Capital, um, and Champions League. But it's still a treble, and it still is a domestic treble. I don't know why they can't say that. Um, but yeah, last year, last year, of course, we lost in the FA Cup. I completely um, didn't even mention that. Of course, we lost to Manchester City last year in the FA Cup final. But this time round, we've won. So I've given 1.87 million for winning the final. How are we looking financially in the team? 6 million in the black. That's okay. Um, I'm now ranked as one of England's top ever managers. I'm up into 7th place. Uh, with my five teams, uh, I say five teams, four clubs, actually three clubs and two national teams and my trophies I've won. 753 points, still a long way off um, the top, obviously, the two greats up there. But um, it's nice to be on this Hall of Fame at last. And uh, what, are we, what are we in the continent? So we would have 718 points, so still quite a way off getting Rafa Benitez. But... Um, we're gaining on him fast, and despite Fat Rafa being at... Actually, he got sacked from Tottenham, of course. So Fat Rafa's not even in the job. So we can actually catch him very easily. Sven Goran Eriksson don't manage. Fabio Capello's retired. Um, Mancini is um, out of a job. Luis Enrique is out of, actually in Spain, so he could actually win a major trophy there. Uh, but he's not playing it anymore. He's don't there. He's retired. Uh, so a lot of people on this Hall of Fame, again, have retired or are currently not managing. The only people who are currently managing... Or currently in clubs, you know, are probably going to be um, Pep. Pep's not even at a club. Where did Pep? Pep got sacked from Arsenal. That was right. So in fact, you know, hardly anyone's got a club. But it's just it's making it easier for us to just climb and achieve so many things. Uh, Mourinho praises my spirit from leading us to FA Cup success. Ferreira wants a new deal. Um, I'll deal with that again off camera. FA Cup review. We won it, and it was just it was great. You know, it was great. A great year. Achieving a lot of things, and how does that how does that put us? 
There we go, we're a favourite personnel. That's what I wanted to see. I'd love to become a legend here. So, this is going to be it for the club, for Chelsea this season. We're not going to do another update with Chelsea. There's nothing else we can really go through. We've sort of gone through everything in this video. We've had a, It's a very long video. And I'm going to try and make it even longer by stretching this ending out. And uh, But I will meet you back in a in about a, in a few weeks time because we'll be starting our copper america so like I, I mentioned this briefly last time but i'll i'll say it again for anyone who maybe didn't know i will not be live comming any of these copper america group a games because i think they're all winnable games and they're all games we should win all the friendly building up to it what i will do is i will live com the um what, how is this done again is it is it quarterfinals after the groups yeah i will live com the quarterfinals once we get there, I mean, we should. And then I'll also live com any other, um, further, however further we go in the competition as well, until we get knocked out. So basically, you could potentially see three live comms in one video, quarterfinal, semi-final, and a final, and hopefully us win it. That would be great. So yeah, next time I meet you back, it will all be about Brazil. So until next time, guys, peace out.